the standard of care after a tooth extraction should be to go in and debride the socket. Now this is a process that takes about 30 seconds and a couple of instruments to make sure that you've got everything completely clean in that socket. Now what happens when you take a tooth out is sometimes you may have a chunk of calculus, you might have a piece of amalgam or a restoration, you could have bits of bone if you're sectioning, you could have some tooth that's in there if it's broken, you could have granulation tissue that's there. You could sometimes remove a tooth and think you've got it all and maybe there was an accessory third root or something that you didn't even notice on your PA that's still there that you might see after when you look back in that socket. You should also be palpating the edges, make sure everything's smooth, using a rangeur or bone file to keep that all smoothed down. By doing this, by spending 30 seconds to a minute with every patient after you remove a tooth, you're going to prevent many post-op visits because there's going to be fewer times where your patients aren't healing as well. Now, some of these things, if you have a chunk of bone or you have a chunk of tooth or something that's still in there, you're going to prolong the healing and prolong the pain for your patient, which means more post-op visits, and you're going to be paying that time to that patient to look after them and resolve that problem. Now, what we're going to want to do as the standard for every single tooth, doesn't matter what you see on the PA, you might want to do it a little more aggressively and a little longer if you have infection or an evidence of a radiolucency on that radiograph. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the tooth out, we're going to have our assistant suction all the way to the base of the sockets with a small suction tip to get as deep as possible. After that, we're going to look in with good light and good visibility to see that socket when it's dry to locate any bone chips or any foreign material that might be in there. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be aware of our anatomy and we're going to make sure that we are curetting up the socket and we're going to go right from the base of the socket, scrape all the way up the walls of the bone, and do that circumferentially around that socket while your assistant is suctioning any debris that you might be lifting out. The next step is to go in with your sterile saline, and you can use about 10 mils, 5 to 10 mils of fluid. Just squirt it in there, basically flush right from the base of the socket. Again, assistant is suctioning down in there. That will loosen up any debris that you may have missed. The next thing you want to do is sometimes you'll have some granulation tissue or you might have some tissue that's kind of beat up around the edges or I can't tell you how many times I've taken out really decayed teeth that when you've applied the forceps you've crushed a little piece of tooth off and it's firmly adhered to the gingiva and you don't even see it sometimes because it's covered in blood. Now when you go in here you're going to just clip off any of these things. So you might grab that little piece of tooth tissue. You might grab some inner radicular bone that hasn't been curetted out or hasn't flushed out when you're rinsing that's loose or fractured. You take that out and the other thing to do would be to palpate or feel along the edge of that socket and ensure that the bone is nice and smooth. If it's not, you might want to use a ranger to clip it down a little bit and smooth it with a bone file to ensure that as it heals there won't be any sharp edges for the patient. So making this area very clean and smooth and uh, free of debris is going to save you a lot of time in the long run. Please start doing it for every extraction that you do. This should be the standard of care.